here we want to find the next three terms in each of these uh, arithmetic sequences. So it's given that each sequence is arithmetic. We need to find the next three terms and also we need to find the formula for the nth term. So as you can see, since this is arithmetic, the num uh, denominators are the same. The numerators were, will inc increase by 1. 3 plus 1 is 4 plus 1 is 5. So we know that the next three next three terms should be fairly easy to find, right? So it's going to be 5, 5, 6, 5, and 7, 5 because of the increasing numerators by 1. 5 over 5 is 1. The next one is 6 over 5. The next one is 7 over 5, right? So these are the, the next three terms. Now, what if, what is the formula for the nth term? So let's see. So notice that the... Uh, uh, denominators will be always 5. So we can write a 5 in there. Now the numerator, when we're talking about the first term, starts from 3. So we can't just... And also the difference is always going to be 1, right? 1 times 1 is 1. But then the first one is 3 and not 1. So that means we need to do 1 plus 2, right? So if we write n here, we will satisfy the condition when n is equal to 1, it's going to be 1. But we need a 3, so we need to add a 2. And notice it's going to work for the 4 as well. When n is 2, we need a 4 instead of 2, so we just add 2. When n is going to be 5, uh, sorry, when n is equal to 3 for the third term, which in this case is 5 over 5, I just wrote it as 1, but it's 5 over 5, you will have 3 plus 2, right? So this is going to be 5. And the denominator stays, right? Because it doesn't change. So this is the formula for the nth term of this uh, arithmetic sequence. Now part B. The, the difference here is 3, obviously. Minus 8 plus 3 is minus 5. Plus 3 is minus 2. So we can write the next three terms. Minus 2 plus 3 is 1 plus 3 is 4. Okay? So that's easy. Now the formula for the nth term. So let's see. We need, uh, we need when n is equal to 1, you're going to have a 1 if you put, right? You're going to have a 1. But the difference here is 3. So we know that we're talking about basically uh, adding, adding 3 each time, right? So that means 3 needs to be multiplied by the n. When n, n is equal to 1, it's going to be 1 times 3, which is 3. When as n is equal to 2, it's going to be 6. But the problem is when n is equal to 1, 3 is not equal to minus 8. So it looks like you're shifting. You're shifting to the left of, on the number line, right? Because you're making the first term negative 8. This is really far away from, from 3. So we need to figure out how much we're going to subtract to satisfy that condition. Right? So... What you did so far, 3n, satisfies the condition that these uh, any two adjacent terms will have a common difference of 3 between them. Right? So that's, that's, uh, that's satisfied by the 3n here. But uh, we need to subtract to start from not 3, but from negative 8. So 3, what is the difference between 3 and negative 8? Well, between negative 8 and 0, the difference is 8, the absolute value distance there. Between 0 and 3 is going to be 3. 3 plus 8 is 11. So you have to subtract 11 to get to minus 8. And you can check that. 3 times 1. So we can check that. 3 times 1, the first term and value, minus 11 is going to give you 3 minus 11, which is precisely minus 8. Um, 3 times 2, the end value of 2, Accounting for the second term, minus 11 is going to be 6 minus 11. And 6 minus 11 is precisely minus 5, the second term that you see there. Right, so this works out. So we can circle that, that this is the nth formula. It's very important that you find that. It's usually tougher than to find the next three terms, especially when you're talking about the arithmetic sequence. So the nth formula is tougher to find, but you can see the idea behind it. You have to study and see if there's a pattern, and there will be a pattern when you're talking about any type of, uh, let's say, arithmetic sequence, geometric sequence, there's always a pattern. In this 
case, there's always going to be a common difference that's going to stay the same. Now, for the last example, as you can see, the common difference is going to be 2 pi. 3 pi minus 2 pi is, uh, is going to be pi. Right? So we know that the next three terms are going to be what? pi plus 2 pi, 3 pi plus 2 pi, 5 pi plus 2 pi, 7 pi plus 2 pi, 9 pi. Beautiful. Okay, so now what is the nth term formula here? The nth term formula. So let's think about it. So there's, there's definitely going to be something in parentheses, and outside we're going to have a pi because pi is always there for all terms. Now the first term is 1. If we put the n here, when n is equal to 1, we should just get pi. But when n is equal to 2, we'll get 2 pi, but we need a 3 pi. So there's a difference of 2 pi. Right? So we need to put definitely 2n there. But the problem is when, when n is equal to 1, we're going to have 2 times 1, which is 2, the coefficient of that pi. But we have a 1 instead of 2, so we have to subtract 1. Right? 2 times 1 minus 1, we can test that. 2 times 1, the n value of 1, minus 1 is going to be what? is going to be 2 minus 1, which is 1. Beautiful. And that's exactly what you have here multiplying the pi, 1 pi. 2 times 2, the uh, n value of 2, minus 1 is going to be 4 minus 1, which is 3. Precisely this number multiplying the pi that you see here, accounting for this, right? 2 times 2 minus 1, 3. So this whole thing would turn to 3 when n is equal to 2. 3 pi, that's precisely the second term. Right, so this works out. So this check works, so you can definitely say that this is the nth term formula for this arithmetic sequence. So I hope this was useful. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.